Hi students, hope you are all doing good. So today we are going to discuss about insulating materials which are used for building and construction. The learning outcome would be at the end of this lecture, the students will be able to gain knowledge on insulating materials, types of insulating materials and its application. So first of all, let us define what is an insulating material. All those materials that retard or stop the flow of heat, electricity and sound, we call them as insulating material. Through them, may be broadly defined as insulating materials. The same materials may not be insulated against all the three types of energy waves. It may not be insulated against heat or electricity or sound or more than one of two transmissions also. And the insulator may be studied under three general headings like thermal insulator, electrical insulators and sound insulator. Just because they are not allowing uh, the sound or heat or uh, electricity, uh, we should not conclude that they are not useful. Okay, They are very much useful in many other ways. So first of all, let us get into thermal insulators. The main function of thermal insulator is to act as a partial or total barrier in the passage of heat. This kind of aluminium foil we would uh, witness in uh, packaging, uh, food packages and all. Um, the, especially in fast foods, okay, the hot food will be covered with aluminium foil so as to prevent the flow of heat. And the properties of thermal insulator would be, um, they should have very low thermal conductivity and also it should have a very high softening point. It should be stable to thermal shocks that should not break on repeated heating or cooling. And it should be stable chemically and physically at high temperature for prolonged period at stretch. And it should be resistant to moisture and vibration, have a good strength also. So these are some of the examples for thermal insulator. Like the situation where a thermal insulator may be required or where it, the flow of heat has to be stopped from a working place to the outside environment, especially like a furnace to outside. Inside the furnace will be maintaining a particular temperature that, ha that should not be transmitted outside. So we make use of thermal insulators like uh, bricks. And the flow of heat has to be stopped from an outside source to a place, for instance, in special rooms where equipment is to be worked at low temperature because some of the instruments will work only at low temperature. If it is getting heated up, it may not work. So in such case, we'll have to prevent passage of heat from outside to inside. So here you could see during summer, the heat is reflected so that uh, with the help of air condition, uh, we can maintain the temperature. And during winter, uh, with the help of heater, we maintain the temperature. Okay, so insulation is thus helpful. Types of uh, heat insulators, uh, we have uh, uh, mag magnesium plastic and aluminium foils. Magnesium plastic, this consists of the roughly blended mixture of hydrated magnesium carbonate and asbestos. And it is applied as a plastic mask cover over the surface from which the escape of heat is to be controlled. And aluminium foils, these are essentially thin sheets of uh, aluminium and its alloys. When it is wrapped over steam pipes and other appliances, it serves as a good insulating material. So magnesium plastic will be like this. And I think uh, you all seen aluminium foils. And the types of heat insulators, we have asbestos and car. It is asbestos, it is uh, one of the best uh, heat insulating material for big and small applications alike. And uh, these sheets are made from asbestos, mixing some clay in the presence of suitable binder and are used for insulating boilers and also for bulk head lining in ships. And the car, it is lightweight external tissue uh, bark of the oak tree. It has been found to be good heat insulator and is used much for the same purpose. So this is how the asbestos would look like. And this is car. And uh, we have cellular uh, rubber. 
and mineral wood. Cellular rubber, it is a special variety of rubber made extra porous during manufacture. And mineral wool, it is also called rock wool. This mineral, this material is obtained commercially from impure limestone. So cellular rubber will be like this and mineral wool, it looks like this. We have another one called vermiculite. So these are a group of mica-like foliated minerals. Some variety of uh, vermiculites are processed for manufacture of heat insulators. So this is vermiculite. Next we shall move on to electrical insulators. So the properties are as follows like it should be a poor electrical conductivity that is very high electrical resistivity. It should also be resistance to deterioration and heating, very, therm very low thermal expansion, non-inflammable, chemically stable at high temperature, high strength, hardness and resistance to abrasion. And these are some of the examples for electrical insulation. Uh, one such is mica. So the name indicates a group of natural minerals having a sheet like structure by virtue of which they can be separated into thin elastic sheets of this group. Two members named uh, muscovite and uh, phlogopite are used uh, extensively as electrical insulators. So this is an example for mica. And we also have asbestos, the highest grade of asbestos, which occurs in long fiber and is free from iron oxide, is commonly used as insulator in many electrical appliances. So they are used as coverings for electrical wiring and all. And we also have rubber, which is one of the very common used electrical insulator. And uh, it has special properties like very low electrical conductivity, high resistance to moisture and abrasion, high flexibility and high resilience. So rubber tubing. And paper also is uh, classed among very useful insulator for common use. So insulation paper is specially made without addition of fillers. When it is impregnated with oil, its properties as an insulator gets further improved. So paper applied with oil. And another one is synthetic resin. So these artificial materials have occupied a place of great importance in the field of electrical insulation. They are available both in solid and liquid form among the solid product of cellulose ester and phenolic vinyls. So this is some of the synthetic resin, especially bakelite. We have purslin. So all these, I um, guess like uh, you must have studied in ceramics, glass and mica, okay, which are all very good uh, electrical insulators. But some of the ceramics, they are used as uh, conductors also, okay. The purslin, it is burnt mixture of clay, feldspar and quartz. It forms an important group of insulating materials which are characterized with high stability, sufficient hardness, imperviousness to moisture and these properties make ceramic material more suitable for high voltage insulation, switch boxes, condensers and other heating elements. The purslin materials are very much useful in uh, electrical uh, appliances. We have glass on cotton also uh, very much useful for uh, electrical insulation. Glass, cotton. And the third type is sound insulation. High noise is fast uh, becoming acute problem in many cities and uh, so uh, insulation against noise is an important uh, engineering problem because we always talk about noise pollution. So uh, to act like an insulator for sound, uh, it should have uh, cellular, I mean uh, we have best example is cellular concrete. It is a variety of concrete in which voids are created during manufacturing stage. Just like hollow blocks. Okay, sound insulation. So incoming sound and sound is getting reflected. Otherwise, some of the sound is getting absorbed. 
uh, even on the roads we could see like uh, some of the plants will be planted to observe noise that is coming out of horns and sometimes it also observes light that's why at the median we grow plants so acoustic plaster and acoustic boats acoustic plaster this is made by mixing together magnesium oxychloride granulated slag and some gelatin and acoustic boats these are made by bonding together fibrous materials like wood and vegetable fibers in a matrix of plaster they are light in weight and can be cut joined on any ceiling and partition wall so acoustic boats are also made by using vermiculites and perlite so this is an example for acoustic plaster and acoustic boards so the learning outcome is that um, from this lecture you were able to find uh, what are insulating materials and the types of insulating materials and their various applications thank you